Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Eric Simicus will conclude his speech praising love in the symposium and his run through the many different arts by culminating in talking about love's role no longer just in the human body or in music, but throughout the entire cosmos. And there's some interesting plays on words involved with the term cosmos that, that I'll talk about in just a moment. So just to recap, good love in Eric Simicus's view is some sort of concord or harmony or ordering of opposites that while leaving them opposite, opposed to each other, manages to bring them together in a greater unity. Bad love is instead the discord of those, allowing them to sort of break down into their, their antagonisms. And so we can, we can contrast good love and bad love to each other, not only in terms of medicine, but also in terms of gymnastics, in terms of music, in terms of all these different ways in which it, it plays itself out. He's going to say that the same basic elements of, you know, the human body namely the, the hot and the cold, the wet and the dry, all these physical aspects of things are present in the entire cosmos, are present in the entire world of our experience, going beyond just the bodily or the societal, looking to the heavens, looking to the earth, everything that's below it, all of these complex systems that, that are going on with the weather, everything is ultimately working with the same repertoire of, of elements, he thinks. So what that means is that there's going to be an analogy between medicine and all of these larger scale activities and systems and the arts that deal with them. He talks about the seasons of the year and he says that with, with respect to these elements there can be a harmony or a disharmony. I'm going to read a little bit from this because he's got such interesting stuff that he says. He says, When the regulating principle of love brings together these opposites, hot and cold, wet and dry, and compounds them in an ordered harmony, the result is health and plenty for mankind and for the animal and vegetable kingdoms, and all goes as it should. Health not only for the human body as a unit, but health for the human race as a whole, at least in that, that part of the world where things are going all right. Um, same thing for the animals, same things for the plants. When the, the seasons are going as they ought to, of course, you know, the, the animals are eating some of the plants and some of the plants are probably preying on each other and animals are eating each other and human beings are eating both the animals and the plants. But he understands this as sort of a, an ordered system in which, you know, things are able to grow and, and succeed the way that they ought to. Now, it's very different when things are not going as they should, he says. When the seasons are under the influence of that other love, the love that brings about discord, the love that goes too far, the love that allows the opposites to break down into their antagonisms, he says, um, all is mischief and destruction. For now plague and disease of every kind attack both herds and crops. That affects not only those particular animals, but also the larger ecosystem in, in which they're involved and the human beings who are dependent upon them. He says, not only these, but frost and hail and blight, these, these sort of weather phenomena. If he was living in the United States, he'd probably say tornadoes as well, you know. Um, but, but I don't think they had too many of those back then. All of them are due to the uncontrolled and the acquisitive in that great system of love. And who actually is able to not, not modify what's going on, but at least get, you know, some idea about what's coming up? The astronomer. 
Uh, and he uses this, this word, astronomia, literally the laws of the stars, the, the you know, workings, the systematic workings of the celestial realm from which we get all these weather phenomena. He also talks about the gods. And it's important to remember that for the ancient Greeks, the gods were themselves part of the cosmos. They were incredibly powerful forces within the cosmos who were sometimes identified with particular regions or particular phenomena. So, for example, the lightning bolt was understood as Zeus's weapon by which he would punish people. Um, you know, earthquakes are, are identified with Poseidon, who is also the god of the sea. Um, you know, the growing of the crops is identified both with Demeter and her daughter Persephone. Uh, the reason why crops end up dying and everything goes, goes you know, bad during winter is because Persephone is going down into the earth. And we can go on and on and on with this. The Greeks personified the winds. They had all sorts of things along these lines. Every single creek or stream had its own, you know, little, little deity involved. But um, here's the key point that Eric Simicus is making. There is a possible communion, a koinonia. Uh, and this is an important term. A koinonia means a commonality or a sharing. Um, a, a, you might even say community between human beings and the divine. This is the way he sees it, the way things ought to be um, but it's not something that necessarily is going to be the case. Just like with the, the weather, it could be the good love that's predominating, but it could also be the bad love, and we don't have a lot of control over that. The same thing can happen between human beings and the divine. But we actually have a bit more control over that because we have two arts, the art of sacrifice and the art of divination. Divination, by the way, um, doesn't just mean some occult phenomena, you know, that's what we often think of it today. It's literally um, trying to find out what the will of the gods is, what the gods want to say to us. So, you know, if things are going wrong, you go to the diviner to find out, well, why is Zeus mad at me? How, how can I make things right? How can I restore this koinonia, this communion between the human and the divine? So the two arts might work together, sacrifice and divination. Um, the point of them, like I put here, is to restore or to preserve something, and Eric Simicus calls this love, preserving or restoring the love that has been lost, a kind of harmony, a kind of order. Remember how he sees good love? Um, and he says something really interesting here to, to sort of bring this to a close. He says that impiety, so bad actions towards the gods that then tends to disrupt this harmony that ticks the gods off, impiety stems from indulging unhealthy love on what we might call a lower level. So what, you know, what uh, causes impiety? He says, most of our impiety springs from our refusal to gratify the more temperate love, to follow the order of things, to actually keep all the opposites in harmony with each other. Um, and he, he goes on and he says, uh, to gratify this more temperate love, to respect and defer to him in everything we do. And from our following that other love in our attitude towards who? Towards our parents. Parents are considered to be, in a certain respect for the ancient Greeks, semi-divine. They occupy this status that's, you know, in between the, you know, the purely human and the divine. Why? Because they provided one with the principle of, of life. And so they're responsible for one's very being or existence. And impiety extends to not only the gods, but also to one's parents as a result. Um, what would lead somebody not to do that? Well, it could be that they've got a disordered soul in which case music or medicine might be the thing to affect that. So he says it's the diviner's office to, to be the guide and healer of these loves. And his art of divination, with its power to distinguish between those principles of human love that tend to decency and reverence, is, in fact, the source of concord between God and man. So what we're left with in Eric Simicus's view is we've got the human body itself, which is worked on by medicine, in which good and bad love can exist. Hopefully the, the bad love is driven out, the good love is created. We have music also working on, on the soul. We have all these other arts. And then finally we have the entire cosmos, which can be, if not worked upon, at least understood by certain arts, analogous to those of medicine, seeing everything in terms of good and bad love that, that has to apply 
to jarring or discordant elements that are opposed to each other. 